Hi and welcome back to Plastic Models by Radar Dude and part 5 of the Tamiya 135th scale M2A2 Bradley. So last episode I had worked up to step 16. Now ready to move on to step number 17. Next part, step 17, I need to uh, glue the whatever you call it. I'm at, a, I'm at a loss right now. Stowage area on the back of the turret. Can't remember what it's called. So, you know, somebody tell me in the comments. I just totally went blank. Turret basket. Good grief. So, we got C4 here and then E39 here. Alright, all these parts are cut off and cleaned up. So I'll start with this, just like the instructions show. So this goes here and it's got this cool little protrusion and a slot, matching slot to make sure it's in the right place. So what I'm going to do to make sure that this all goes together correctly, I'm going to use this right here as my break point for the cement. I'll do this side first. Same thing I do on aircraft and it helps quite a bit to help line things up and make sure things are all pressed in and fitting properly. So I'm just going to go around like this and that and then just give it a little squeeze. It's nice because it has these edges right there that help keep it from um, gluing incorrectly, you know, the angle of the bottom. If it was just this bottom plate without these supports on the side, it might make it a little more difficult to uh, keep it flat. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then I'll do this side here. You can see this little bit of springiness there. I want it to conform to this piece here. So, just put that like that. Now there's some gaps. Not too bad, but here and here, I'm not going to worry about them. They're on the bottom. Some people might think that's heresy, but it's going to be underneath. And I don't want to take the time. I'm being lazy. That's what it boils down to. And I can, I can freely admit that. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with being a slug once in a while. So I'm going to clamp that just to make sure so I don't have to hold it forever. So while that's drying, I'm going to start gluing on some of these extra platey kind of things. Um, let's see. I need to do this right here, which I am going to assume is a guard of some kind for the antenna mount and it fits just like that whoa not like that it goes like that there are a couple of little l-shaped marks up there and the top the edges fit right in there like that so let me put it in place here and see if I can get it to stay. Wow. Let's hold it like that. Tack one side at a time. weren't cooperating let that sit just for a sec so while that let's see what else can I do um, I think I will glue the hinges 
for the hatch right here. Right here, sorry, nope, it is for over there. So let's see, we got A26, which is this little tiny piece here. Okay, that one's kind of sketchy, so let's do it like this. Oh my goodness. Wow. Having a little trouble here, folks. Let's try and do it with just my fingers. How's that? The part is shaped kind of weird, so there we go. It's hard to get a grip with tweezers. Oh my goodness. There we go. That was grueling. Sorry. Mash it down in there good. Make sure it's vertical. Like that. And then this one goes, this piece goes here. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clickety this into place. Like that. And put that there and that there. Just like that. that sweet okay so that's in place so let's check this yeah we're good there so I'm gonna glue this one here next <clears throat> use my tweezers to push it all the way over where it's supposed to be hold it for a few seconds and then glue this here. Like that. So now I can glue this here. Oh man, there's a horrible ejector pin mark there. I need to sand that off. And I can glue it in place. Now the hole that goes is a little bit bigger than the width or the thickness of the part so what I've done is I pressed it up against this side where you can't see a gap because you can't really see the gap in between there it's just a way to minimize some gaps without, you know, having to do too much. 
crazy stuff. All right, so the next part I need to do is this turret basket business. So what is supposed to happen is this part here glues on here. that I'm assuming so this part goes here so I gotta make sure Yeah, this part, whoops, goes here like this. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to glue it and I may have to flex it around. Oh wait, I'm sorry, it goes like this. <laughs> Keep messing that up. So this part goes right here. So let's see if I can get it glued on there without making a big old nasty fingerprint on it. This little ridge here on this part bottoms out right there. So let's see how it's going to work. Looks pretty good. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, I may have to, you know what, let's see, I think what I'm going to do, pop, so I'm going to glue this part on here first. These little lips here fit into these channels on the bottom, so I'm going to glue those, and then I'll glue those, ex those other parts on the ends in place. Hopefully I'll have enough working time to do that. Or I could do this. Sorry people, I'm just all over the place today. But I want to do this once. You know, the whole measure measure twice cut once kind of thing yeah let's just do it like this sorry i'm bumbling around here people i'm just having to figure this out as i go so let's submit there submit there and there make sure it's tightly into place and then let's see how these parts fit so one thing I do need to do is make sure I leave enough of a gap there we go There it is, right there. That looks almost good. There it is. Yeah. Just like that. Whoa. Okay, this part just keeps sliding. There we go. Man, that's 
That was tricky. Tricky ticky tabby. A little bit more cement in there. There and there. Alright, so that part's good. So now we gotta put this part in. Same thing. It's gonna fit. like that cool there we go not bad that will work all right looks good the ammo boxes I'm not gonna glue on for reasons stated earlier. So next, I gotta glue this in here, which is, I think it's a like a manual sight or external sight, or maybe it's used for bore sighting the gun, or I don't know, something, something cool. So it fits in here and right there. So the gun will not be movable. So if you needed to, if you're building a diorama or something, you wanted to have the gun at a certain elevation, you would have to modify this part here, which would not be a big thing, I don't think. So let's make sure that's pressed down. All right, that looks good. So that concludes step 17. All right, I'm gonna let the uh, <clears throat> turret dry for a bit with all those small parts before I continue on. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some masks for the wheels so I can spray the green um, on the wheels and on the lower hull. And to cut the wheel masks, I am going to use, finally, my Shadow Hobby Circle Cutter. Shadow Hobby Thinner Line Circle Cutter. <clears throat> this is a pretty cool uh, thing. If you want to check them out, go to www.shadowhobby.com and uh, you can check out what they have, but it's a really cool cutter. And you know, there's a lot of ways to cut circles and stuff like that. You know, there's circle templates. There's the little uh, this type of cutter here that I've used uh, many times in the past that, that works really well. But the main reason I got this one is because I want to be able to cut roundels, roundel masks for aircraft. Um, so that's why I have it. So it's not just overkill just to cut. You know wheel masks and stuff but I do want to try it so here is what I'm going to do real quick like I'll, I'll kind of tell you how it works uh, you have the cutting part right here and then you have this is kind of like the adjuster and also the handle to actually do your cutting and it has uh, markings I think they're in millimeters on the uh, on this little scale here they supply a little arrow that's really hard to get into place, so I kind of mess around with it. I don't know how accurate it is, but I get it close, and uh, then I adjust up or down accordingly. So then, it's quite simple. Um, you just set it down on your masking material, in this case just some good old tape, and you just turn that baby around like that, and boom. So then once I get the circle cut, then I can use my knife to cut around it. Not too concerned about how accurate this cut is here because it's gonna overlap the tire portion anyway. The rubber portion, I should say. And you just peel it off like that, then 
It's just a matter of putting it up against the rim, making sure it's lined up all the way around, and Huey Kablooey, ready to paint. So I'm going to do the same thing on the inside as well. So I'm going to cut these masks out, get the wheels all masked up, then I can move on to actually painting. All right, paint's mixed up. I'm going to start with the wheels. I am using my Iwata HPM2. I'm using Mission Models NATO Green. And uh, my Mission Models Thinner with Poly and Clear prim Primer, Clear Primer in it. So let's see how it works. With all the wheels and the lower surfaces of the um, hull painted, we can move on to step 18, which is the tow launcher and the installation of it. So let's see, first we need B57, 51, 60, 53. So we need all those parts. <clears throat> all right, so I've got all these parts cut off and they're ready to assemble. But I wanted to talk real quick about this part here. Now sometimes you get these springs and they can look pretty funky because they'll have a seam running right along the edge. So there's a number of ways I guess you can do this, but this is what I do. I use my knife and I scrape the high parts down flush with the actual raised part of the spring. Then I take this very, very fine, this is from a scribing kit, but it's got this saw here, so you can scribe real fine lines. And I use that to get the seam line that's down in the in between the springs. Just do that, brush off the extra, you know, a little bit of dust. Then taking some to me extra thin, you just run it right along where you did that and it'll smooth out any burrs or any rough spots and you got yourself a manageable spring so there's that so let's put this together first thing get this part here and uh, this part here goes here now they've made it in a way that you really can't get it backwards because there's a little Raised part there, notch part there, so boom. That fits right there like that. So I'll put that there. Cement there. There. And there. Okay, so there's that end. Okay, then on the other side, you have this part, which has a notch there and a little kind of elongated oval there. So that fits there. So again, you don't have to worry about putting it in the wrong place. I sanded this edge here and I forgot to get the extra dusty part off. Okay, so let's put that there. Like that. Cement all the way around. Like that. Okay, so there's that. Looking good. Okay, so the next part is this part here and this one again you can't get it backwards because peg there slot there so it fits right down like that
see how I want to do this. Touch it right to the seam. Let capricious action pull it through. Maybe that's I know I said that wrong. Just being a smart aleck. And then run some right there like that. Okay. So that is that part. So next, we need to take this. Like this. And then we need B54. The difference between B54 and B55 is 54 has this pin right there. And that goes like that. So that little pin fits in that slot. This piece right here butts up against that little corner piece. So I think what I'm going to do in order to keep from getting my finders in it, put a little dab on there like that. Make sure it's squared up. And then apply some more cement. Like that. Okay. And take this one here, like the hold that in place, then B55. Again, there is a. I'm gonna flip it over this way, make it a little easier. Peg in a matching slot like that. So let's. A little bit of cement on there. Make sure it's pressed into place. here and there we go let that dry for a minute <clears throat> okay so I got this front cover glued in place and there are two options. You have stowed position and firing position. Firing position, that flap, <clears throat> that cover would be open. But I'm doing stowed position, so I did it in the closed position. And it just, well, I thought I videoed it, but I didn't. But there's just a pin right underneath this part here. and just fits into place pretty easily. Now, with the stowed position, this part will not be used. Only this part. So I'm going to put it there. It fits right in between those two little raised rail looking things there. It fits the contour of the front of that. So let's put some cement here. And here. Like that that part get it out of the way and <clears throat> while that is drying uh, before I put it in place I'm gonna cut the parts off for the, um, the commander's hatch so let me cut off all these parts here clean them up and glue them in place 
first thing I will, uh, you know what, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to glue A25 in place. And that is one of the hinge points for the commander's hatch. The reason I'm going to do that is I want it to be nice and sturdy when I try and monkey around and get the other part in. So put some cement on there like that. And make sure that it's quite sturdy. So we did that. Um, I haven't put this on yet. I'm going to put this handle here in place and to get it started I'm going to tack it in place like this and then add some more cement. There's some very very faint rings molded into the side here for where it's supposed to be located. And it just drops right down on it like that so get that in place and then I'll put a little more cement on there so we get a nice smooth sturdy bond like that okay so that's ready to go then this part here some crazy reason um, there's like a little little bit of mold residual there okay there we go so this whoops these two little ears fit onto those pins right there and it bottoms out on the back so what I'll do is fumble around with it a little bit I'll put a little bit of cement in here first like that now this hatch I want to make sure I don't um, glue it in place because I want it to be able to open for the commander so I don't want to glue the hatch itself just the hingy part so let's put that there like that whoops and then this one See if I can put this on here like that. Make sure that is nice and sturdy. good then this piece here these posts are located there's like a little hopefully you can see it like a little L shaped ridge and that's where those posts go whoops so like that oh right there carefully apply some cement there and there and also right here that's pressed down good so we're good there 
Looks like I missed a little burr right there, a little bit of flash. I'll have to clean that up whenever I, once it dries good. Um, now V17, this part here, um, that is the cover for this right here. So I am going to paint that separately and glue that on later because I want it to uh, be painted underneath and on top. And if I glue it in place, I won't be able to spray underneath very well. And then this part here goes right there. But I need to sand that a little bit because it is kind of an angle. There, that's better. Much better. So, a little bit of cement there and there, and then around the top edge there, push them into place, and voila. So, then the last thing is this piece here. And it goes, it's keyed to fit that keyhole. So it goes just like that. So I'm going to tack it in place with a little bit of this right here. Put it a little bit even on the inside like that because that's the only contact it makes is just that raised keyhole shaped portion there I'm going to open that up so I can press that down really good like that and then close it and make sure it's got a little bit of slop so I want to make sure that it's parallel with the center line of the turret so that takes care of step 18 which brings us to the last step step 19 part e12 let me cut that off we'll take a look and see if I'm going to do that now or wait till after I paint all right after looking at it I think I'm gonna glue or I'm gonna paint this separately because it is flat black and um, I don't want to try and paint this on the kit so I'm gonna paint this separately so I will set, set it aside and uh, prime it with everything else and be ready to go so with that I think I'm gonna call this video quits so thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and part four of the Tamiya 135th scale M2A2 Bradley. As always, if you have any hints, tips, questions, complaints, anything wonderful and cheery to say, just put it in the comments section down below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. So until next time for part five, I will see you all later.